So this is the muscle spindle. And normally, the muscle spindle is activated when you're given a load and your arm drops uh, slightly due to the load. Then it's the correction that prevents hyperextension that is going to be activated and caused by these muscle spindle fibers. So your hand is outstretched and you're given a load. This is going to stretch this area, the extrafusal fibers, which is going to pull on the muscle spindle, which I've drawn in the middle right there. These on either side are the intrafusal fibers. So you're given a load that stretches the muscle spindle. This is going to cause this is going to cause these muscle spindle fibers uh, to fire via the afferent neuron, which is going to go through the dorsal root ganglion, which I've drawn right here. Um, it's going to go through the dorsal root ganglion and then the spinal cord. It's going to synapse, and I'm going to draw it kind of outside of the spinal cord, just because it's easier. It's going to synapse onto two motor efferent neurons. So one is going to be the gamma motor neuron, and this innervates the intrafusal fibers. The other is the alpha motor neuron, which innervates the extrafusal fibers. Okay, so let's go over the reflex again. You're given a load. This stretches the extrafusal fibers, which then in turn um, increases the tension and stretches the muscle spindle. So the muscle spindle is going to start firing via the afferent neuron, synapse onto the alpha, which innervates the extrafusal fibers, and the gamma, which innervates the intrafusal fibers, causing the muscle to contract and bring the arm back up to where it was before you were given the load. So now, if we were to cut the dorsal root and take that out of the equation, you no longer have the reflex. You no longer are able to synapse through the afferent pathway onto both of these at the same time. Okay? But you can experimentally choose one of these to stimulate independently. So if you were to take the alpha motor neuron and just stimulate this, just stimulate the alpha motor neuron, would it increase or decrease the firing of this afferent neuron? It would decrease the firing of this afferent neuron because when you stimulate the alpha, these fibers are so big, these are the ones that are actually going to be causing the contraction. And so when they contract, they pull in, they pull in this way. And that causes less tension to be on the muscle spindle fibers. If less tension is on the muscle spindle fibers, less firing is going to be occurring. With the gamma, if you were to just only stimulate the gamma motor neuron, which innervate these tiny little intrafusal fibers that are so small and so few in number, it's going to cause contraction, and it's going to pull these this way. So if it contracts these intrafusal fibers inward, that's going to increase the tension on the muscle spindle, increase the firing of the afferent neuron. Okay, note that although we are getting either a decrease or increase in this afferent neuron, nothing's going to be able to happen because the firing is going to increase, but is it going to be able to complete the reflex? No, because we've cut out the dorsal root. Okay, so looking again at only stimulating the alpha, would this cause contraction? Yes. The reason why this causes contraction, like I mentioned earlier, is because these muscle fibers are huge. These are huge, so big in number. It's the main. Um, these are the main muscle. These are the main fibers that are actually causing contraction. If you stimulate the gamma, on the other hand, it is going to cause contraction of the intrafusal fibers, and that in turn is going to pull on the muscle spindle. But it's not going to cause whole muscle contraction without the reflex. If you did have the reflex and you stimulated the gamma, which then pulled the muscle spindle, increased firing, um, 
and was able to synapse onto both of these, you would get contraction. But with the gamma, the reflex is required. The activation of the gamma and alpha is required for contraction because these muscle um, fibers are just way too few and way too small in number to actually cause whole muscle contraction. Okay, so let's think of this in terms of what Dr. Porter was talking about with uh, with the animal. Experimentally, we've cut the dorsal root, and now we take. Now we are going to isolate and either independently stimulate the gamma, sorry, the gamma, or the alpha, and see if the muscle, if the limbs on this animal become rigid or if they st stay limp. So when you originally cut the dorsal root. The muscle is going to go limp because none of your motor neurons are stimulated. So now if you just stimulate your alpha, like we talked about earlier, would that cause the limbs on the animal to become stiff or limp? It would cause them to become stiff because you have innervation to these huge extra piece of fibers that is going to cause contraction of the entire muscle. So here the limbs of the animal would become stiff. If you only stimulate the gamma, like we talked about earlier, this would cause contraction of the intrafusal fibers, increase the firing of the muscle spindle, but you've taken away this reflex pathway. So you're not going to be able to get whole muscle contraction. So in the gamma motor neuron, if that is the only one that's stimulated, you're going to have an animal that has limp limbs.